Hello everyone. Okay, I hope we're all well and happy. Um, this is the last video for a week because next week would have been um, the May half term week. Um, so um, I'll try to try and do what we're doing in lessons in what we're doing normally in lessons. So basically, I'll do no videos um, next week. So the one after that will be on the first of June or second of June, whatever the Monday is. <clears throat> Um, we're very nearly there with Russia, so the work on the set today, there's there's a fair bit to it. Um, but if you think about it, what's, this is what I would normally have set on like the last day of half term anyway, because uh, I did horrible and nasty and make you work over the um, the holidays. So what we're going to focus on today is opposition groups. Now before we do that, uh, last lesson or last session or whatever you want to call it, um, I left you to find out about the use of terror um, and three extreme examples. 1905 Lenin and Stalin. I hope everyone uh, managed to do that. I hope you all, hope you all managed to find some nice stuff on that. Uh, and you need to be thinking about you know which of those uh, periods was perhaps the worst or the most repressive, uh, that type of stuff. Now what I'm going to do to, for today's is I'm basically um, we're going to work through this booklet, but also I'm going to use the PowerPoint that has put on. Uh, on under the session under the session under the section on opposition groups and there's a powerpoint she's got called nature Go government opposition okay so i'm going to use some of these slides and in class we, we probably would use more of the slides and discuss some of them a little bit more um but we'll go through them anyway now if you look at slide two on here <clears throat> opposition and control um you could like i said uh, if you've got a general question about the about government and the nature of government, you know, assess the view um, there's more continuity and change in Russian government or something, then you'd obviously you do a you do a paragraph about repression, okay, as as part of that. You could though quite easily get an exam question which just deals with means of repression. So you could get a question like I don't know, assess the view that the Tsars were more repressive than the communists, or the other way around. Or assess the view that Stalin was the most repressive ruler of Russia between 1855 and 1964. You could get that type of question. And what I would do, my my three or four paragraphs for like an essay which is purely based on repression and control, um, will be on slide two of Liz's PowerPoint. So you do, and again, it's up. To, she's put four paragraphs here. Um, depends how fast you write. You might be happy with three, and you can get top marks with three. So don't worry too much about it. But I think you probably do one about censorship, one about so the use of censorship um, in this period. You do a paragraph about the police and the secret police in particular. Uh, one about the army and how the army was used to control people. And one about propaganda, so how all the rulers use propaganda. So if you've got a question purely about repression, um, then they would be the four areas that you need to um, think about and have little counter arguments to. What I will do, um, I'm not sure when, but because um, obviously the question we've been looking at, and you've done two paragraphs for, you've done a paragraph for me about, was that very general one about continuity and change across the period. And I won't mind. I want to give you an example of a paragraph where they've got a named thing in it. So like, you know, was Stalin the most repressive ruler? How to go about doing that type of um, thematic type of essay? Um, so some homework for myself for next week is I'll do a paragraph. I might do that Russian government one you've all been doing bits of, but I'll do it as if it's mentioned something in particular um, and how the paragraph will be slightly different, but kind of similar as well. OK, then. So. What we look at today is opposition. <clears throat> and what you need to know is, I mean, the types of question you might get in opposition is, you know, who was opposing Tsars and communists? And the other type you might get is something about the motives behind uh, opponents to the regimes, or the regimes uh, might be a better one. So you might get a question like, um, I don't know, was opposition greatest for the Tsars than the communists? Or... Was opposition more effective under the communist rule than the czarist rule? Um, that type of one. Or were the reasons for opposition to the czars and the communists similar? So you can see there those three questions, how basically the last one's dealing with what's the root cause of opposition? Was it the same or different? And then the first two was more about the nature of opposition on which groups. I think apart from the questions about... Um, Actually, you could even do the the reasons behind up the yeah any question about the the reasons behind opposition 
or certainly want to bout opposition, I think you probably go along the lines of um, you talk about different groups in your paragraphs. You do a group, you know, you do one paragraph about um, agricultural workers and their opposition throughout the period. You probably do one about industrial workers, their opposition throughout the period. You might do one about nationalities, their opposition across the period. Um, that type of thing. So I think I'll probably for quite a few of those, you know, um, was opposition greatest, was opposition this and that. I think I'll probably, my first thought was, oh, I'll do an industrial workers and agricultural workers. Like I might do nationalities or I might do political kind of opponents. Do it something like that, perhaps. So with that in mind, if you look in your um, booklet, there's a table and it's mainly about the Tsarists. Um, Opposition groups. says opposition to Russia's rule is most evident under Tsarist rule um, because it's a bit more difficult under totalitarian, under the communists. And on this table, you've got the different groups. These are essentially nice paragraphs where you've got industrial workers. And there's a little picture there of an industrial worker. And it's got grievances. Why did they oppose the Tsar? Were they successful? Uh, you've got peasants, so your agricultural workers. Again, Grievances against the Tsar, were they successful? Uh, educated middle class or intelligentsia, okay? Um, likewise there, and again, you should know a little bit about a little bit about that from Alexander II stuff that we did. Uh, the landed gentry, so did they receive much opposition from that, the upper classes? Uh, was there much opposition and how did it come out with the army? And then the nationalities, so things like the Finns and the Poles. And again, when we did Alexander the Second, we came across the Polish uprising, didn't we? So oh, there's a point for you. Okay, and then which group was able to oppose Russia's rulers most effectively and why? And at the top of the table, it says, use Evans and Jenkins 101 to 103. That is on the Moodle bit in the opposition part. I think it's called Evans and Jenkins Chapter 4. And you can scroll down, you'll find 101 and 103. Murphy Morris, now to be honest with you, I couldn't find the 3841 bit, I'm not quite sure where Liz has done with that bit, but 60 to 62 is in that opposition section. Okay, so you should be able to find that. I think it's called Opposition to Nicholas II. Corin and Fine, or Fee, you as you say them, um, that is called Opposition Groups um, in that middle section opposition, so that's definitely on there. Um, the Access to History book, which covers all this period, which is on Moodle. Um, that might have some bits and bobs on there as well. Now, what I'd also like to do is that some of these groups um, also opposed at certain times uh, the communists as well. So as an additional thing, you, have, you could write it in red for communists, I suppose, couldn't you? Or if you want to add a bit to the side of this or whatever. Um, I don't think they all did, but industrial workers... Um, you might tell you there's a little bit of opposition to communist rule. And I'm thinking in particular, here's me giving you an answer, isn't it? Uh, about Khrushchev and that protest when the food prices went up in 1962. Um, that's what was in the back of my mind on that one. And Stalin as well sometimes accused industrial workers of sabotage. Um, again, it was, it was possibly more imagined opposition from Stalin. Um, and again, I think the video talks about that, if I remember correctly, on Stalin's purges. Uh, peasants. Um, was there much opposition? Now, you should know, Pundrin, about Lenin and Stalin's purges and terror, terror and stuff, that Lenin had quite a low opinion of some of the peasants. Uh, he saw them all being quite conservative with a small c. Um, Stalin and the, um, the whole um, period in the early 1930s with collectivization and there was opposition to him for that, wasn't there, from the peasants? He let them all starve, basically. You could, if you want to, write the word Kulak, K-U-L-A-K, and do a little bit about them if you wanted to, under Stalin, um, this kind of middle class, but well, they weren't the middle class, they're slightly richer peasants than everybody else. Uh, they were targeted by Stalin and that kind of nasty ends. So they were fitting, if I was doing a, a paragraph, I'm talking about opposition from agricultural workers, and include that about Stalin and, and that. So again, you could include them in, um, Educated men of class intelligence, well, they kind of disappeared on the communists, so that's probably not relevant. The landed gentry, obviously, are not relevant, Tyler, because they were kind of wiped out um, in 1917. Um, I'm trying to think where the army is really relevant for the communists. I don't think they really are. 
Um, so those three, they're probably not particularly relevant for communists. Nationalities are, though, because Stalin accused some nationalities of kind of collaborating with the Germans um, during the Second World War, uh, some Ukrainians and people like that. So you might you might find a little bit about that. And there were certain other little ethnic groups in Russia who kind of met sticky ends because Stalin wasn't too keen on them. So find out a little bit, if you can, especially for nationalities... Uh, peasants and industrial workers, whether they actually opposed the communist rulers as well in any way, shape or form. And what I've just been blabbering on about kind of gives you some kind of the points I would make for that. OK, which you can use as a basis to find out some more info. OK, so that tells us about some of the groups um, who were opposed um, to um, these um, the czars in particular, but also a little bit about the communists as well. Now, the next little task says group task, opposition from political parties. Now, obviously, in class, what I would have done is give you some homework and two of you would have found out about the populists, two of you found out about Marxists, cadets, Octoberists, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, we can't do that. So what I want you to do, you have to do it on your little own, son, is to find out about these political parties. And again, these appeared in it towards the end of Tsarist rule when you had those doomers. Uh, find out about the background of these groups, uh, why they oppose Tsarist rule, etc., etc. Now, obviously, these particular groups were not in opposition to the communist rule because Lenin basically got rid of all of them, didn't they? Apart from the Bolshevik Party, obviously, uh, within the first like six, eight months of him becoming ruler of Russia. So these are only really applicable um, to that kind of the latter years of the Tsars, Nicholas II in particular. Um, so find out some stuff from that. Now, the communists, they did have a different form of opposition. Um, so, yes, they had a little bit of opposition from agricultural workers. They had a little bit of, and again, you might say that was a bit imagined. They had a little bit of opposition from industrial workers. Again, some of it was real, but some of it was also in Stalin's mind. A little bit of opposition, arguably, from the nationalities. OK, but where they did face opposition was actually from within the Communist Party itself. There were certain groups of the Communist Party who disliked Lenin and the way he was going about things. There were certain groups from within the Communist Party who disliked Stalin and the way he was going about things and saying he's not really a Marxist, he's doing all these nasty things. OK, there's also opposition to Khrushchev as well, OK, who... And they tend to be people who disliked the changes he was making and the fact he was dissing Stalin. So, again, Stalin comes out quite strongly in this. For Stalin, some of it was real opposition. Some of it he kind of made up to make sure he got rid of certain people who he thought opposed him, whether they did or not is another matter. What I'd like you to do is use the Access to History book. You need to answer these questions about what, what opposition did the communists face from individuals from within their own party. There's only a few questions there. And then Liz on slide eight of her PowerPoint has also got like an overview of this opposition. So uh, you've got Kamiev, Zinoviev and Rykov. OK, why they opposed. Um, it was mainly uh, Stalin who they opposed. Um, you've got Kamiev, Zinoviev and Stalin. And what were they upset about? There's like a nice summary, basically. So do a little bit about that. Again, that video you had to watch about Stalin and the ter Terror, it talks about Rykov, doesn't it, and his kind of murder in um, Leningrad. Okay. So have a look at that. Do those couple of questions. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. And then what I'd then like to do is if you look on slide seven, uh, there's this nice kind of question. How serious was the threat from opposition to Russian government? Obviously, trying to ignore 1917, because obviously that was quite serious because it led to you know changes of several governments. But how serious were the threats of opposition to the Tsars, communists? Was it serious? Was it not serious? And again, I'm just thinking about if you've got a question about, you know, was opposition greater or more serious under the Tsars and the communists? I would do it under you know, industrial workers' opposition, agricultural workers' opposition, that type of thing. So what you might want to do when you're drawing up when you're drawing up this table and filling it all in, you might want to colour 
coordinate it or draw a picture of a peasant and industrial worker or something. So you can then kind of you see what you'd write in a paragraph basically, can't you? Um across this. So use access to history, but you should also have from all your own notes what you've all been doing, basically, to think about how was opposition from the agricultural workers serious against the Tsars, or was it not very serious or very effective? Was it serious or not serious against the communists or not? Um, industrial workers, etc., etc. So if you, if you get that done, that would be great. Okay, just trying to see what else there is. Now if you look on slide 12, uh, at the bottom here, Liz has put some potential type of exam type questions. So you might get a question like, assess the view that the causes of opposition under the Tsars were different from those under communists. We'll look at that in a second or two. Opposition was more effective before 17 than after. Okay, so again, that's one of these, you know, was it effective, was it not effective? Was it more effective under the Tsars and the communists or the other way around? So again, that's the type of question you might get on this. I think they're quite nice questions and, and I'd, I'd, I'd do them, as I said before, you know, industrial workers, agricultural workers, do it that way around and it's your paragraphs. Now, this question one, assess the view that the causes of opposition under the Tsars was different. So what you need to do is have a think about, well, what was the cause of unrest, opposition, from the industrial workers under the Tsars? What was the cause of unrest or opposition from the industrial workers under the communists? And was that cause similar or different? Okay, now to help you with this, slide 10, there are... Let us kind of put on some reasons for opposition, just kind of general reasons. So you've got like uh, working conditions. So think about industrial workers. Uh, what were the causes of all those strikes they had against the Tsarist rule? Well, quite a lot of it was to do about working conditions, wasn't it? They seemed quite upset about that. What was the cause of opposition under the communist rule? Well, that thing about the food prices increasing under Khrushchev, which led to that problems at no, Taffy Gorsko, it was called. But also, of course, they had really bad working conditions as well, didn't they, in those factories? So there's a little bit of working conditions there um, and kind of their kind of poor life, if you like. So they're kind of similar, aren't they, to what the Tsars had? You know, you had food prices rising, poor working conditions. The same was true for the Tsars. That also was the case under the communist rule as well. Okay. Um, did repression cause, you know, think about the peasants. Did they cause problems uh, because of working conditions? Well, probably no. But what were their cause of upset? Do so you think about land issues on here? Were land issues the cause of upset amongst peasants under the Tsarist rule? And you might think, oh, yeah, they had to pay those redemptive payments, didn't they? And had all the worst land. Okay, land was clearly a bit of an issue for the peasants under the Tsars. Was it a bit of an issue under the communist rule? Well, they didn't like collectivisation, did they? Having all their land taken away and being controlled by the state. So, again, land was a big issue for the causes of upset and discontent um, there. So, there's there's two paragraphs, basically. So, you could do... So, you had one about, you know, what were the causes of discontent, where you can say working conditions was a, a continuous problem for industrial works under the Tsars and communists, blah, 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 blah. However, it was worse under the Tsars and the communists or whatever. Okay, for agricultural workers, land issues was a constant problem, you know, blah, 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 blah. However, it was worse or not as bad under these particular rulers. So there are some of the reasons for opposition. So we're thinking about that and what would be your four kind of big areas uh, for a question or three areas for a question about um, causes of opposition. And I've kind of given you two there already. Right, I nearly stopped blabbering on you, but please, I know. What was I going to talk about next? Okay, and then finally, if you look at Lizzie's PowerPoint, the very last two slides are about reforms. Okay, did Russia's rulers and their means of repression actually cause opposition as well? Um, so... And did actually their nice reforms, want to use that word, cause opposition. So as we know, Alexander II's emancipation of the serfs, you might class that as being a nice reform, but did that actually cause more opposition later on? You know, those redemptive payments and stuff caused a lot of upset, didn't they? Um, and then 
slide 16 has got a nice summary here about Alexander the Third. record. We tend not to talk about Alexander the Third in huge detail. It pops up every now and again. Uh, but on this last slide are some of the things he did. And again, you might say they're means of repression, you know, trying to make it harder for people to resist Zari's rule. So again, that's there a bit more of an information thing, really. So to summarise, and now I'll start jabbering on, do that table, opposition group to the Tsars, um, using those various resources. I would also in red, especially for nationalities, industrial workers and agricultural workers, um, and also talk about was there any opposition from those groups towards communist rule and how did it kind of manifest itself. Do the thing in opposition parties, okay, um, that kind of covers the end Duma kind of period. Um, look at the stuff about the opposition within the Communist Party itself to the Communist rulers. And there's that slide, uh, is it slide 8, which gives a nice summary. There's some questions from Access to History uh, based on that. Um, then be thinking about and write up that table. Was opposition more serious under the Communists or the Tsars? And again, I think I differentiate on there between the industrial workers, agricultural workers, nationalities, um, etc, etc, because then it will give you the ideas of how the paragraphs would be. Um, and then look at, what's the last bit I was going to look at? Oh yeah, the causes of opposition. So you've got here on slide 10 all these different causes of opposition. Okay. Um, you can either write down land issues and then write down under communist and czars how it affected opposition. So you could do that for each of those. Or there's that table on that slide with Tsars, PG and Communists. You could put the different causes under whichever heading you think was most appropriate. Or it could be more than one. And then put why um, like that is up to you. So just as long as you're by the end of it, you know what the reasons were. And you can pick out kind of similarities and reasons or differences in reasons. Um, so again... If some nasty evil examiner was to ask a question on that, you could get a nice um, essay done. So there's a little bit there for you to do. Uh, it, I know it's a little bit disjointed. There's a little bits in your booklet. There's bits on this PowerPoint. But hopefully by the end of it, as long as by the end of it, you know um, what the reasons of opposition were across the period and was it same or different? Was it worse or greater under different systems? Uh, as long as you know and can tell me about which groups opposed the Tsars and communists? Were those um, was it more effective or less effective under different rulers? Were the causes the same or different? Um, and as long as you can tell me as well about opposition from within the system, if you like, from within the Communist Party, um, that should set you up. So it's the last video you'll be pleased to know until well, from at least another week. Okay, uh, in that week, obviously get this done. You'll obviously be getting on with that coursework as well. So when we come back um, after our half-term break, well, when we come back, when I do my next one, we come back after the half-term half break, uh, you should be well on with that coursework. And in fact, I think by that Monday after half-term, what, the 1st of June, you should really on that have at least another two more books read, uh, notes taken, and then summaries put onto that coursework log um, about them. Any problems, let me know. Um, yeah, let me know, and I will uh, assist you. Okay.